I'm a Mustang fan, but not a fan boy. So as usual on Rated R Cars, I'm going to tell it like it is. A Mustang fan writes, and I quote, Yikes, Ford Motor Company is circling the plug hole. 50 plus years of design and heritage that cost a gajillion to establish ruined. The interior is retina searingly hideous. I would rather have the equivalent value in bus passes. <laughs> Ouch! Well, I don't share this man's sentiment. There are some things that need to be said, and I'm here to say them. Let's do work. Through this video, I will be showing the names of those who found the secret code in my last video because they are hardcore patriots who watched the full video. If you're new here and you're a patriot, hit that subscribe for Mustangs, motorcycles, and man stuff. And if the word man offends you, subscribe anyway. You've got a lot to learn, such as... In another tweet from Ford's Twitter account, another lazy attempt from Ford. Center console and door panels are unchanged. Roof line and rear quarter unchanged. Dark Horse is just a Mach 1. The rear end is terrible. Front end is like a Mach 1 bumper with a bigger grille and Mach E headlights. Lazy, lazy, lazy. I can agree with some of this. Let's start off with the interior. That is a nice interior, but I had it in my 2018 Mustang GT. I feel no real improvements have been made. Same seats, same center console, same exact shifter, same cup holders, same armrest and storage bin here. Same door handle. The only things that change seem to take the Mustang further away from being a Mustang. Like what Matt Moran pointed out on his channel. Great channel, by the way. Go check it out. We lost those round AC vents and replaced them with these rectangular ones from every other car in the world. Why take away that Mustang uniqueness? Toggle switches. They're no longer toggle switches. Again, taking away from the Mustang feel, in my humble opinion. And man, those huge screens right there, huh? This is my opinion, but I feel the rest of the car isn't a big enough jump forward in modernity for these high-tech screens. It feels like it's mostly an old S650 interior here with a couple of iPads taped on. That's the vibe I'm getting here. And there's nothing wrong with the S550 interior, but this is an S650, so I feel these high-tech screens were just thrown into an older interior. Maybe if the car looked like this, then yes, throw in the screens and holograms and retina scanners and make everything else modern in the interior too. But then how modern should a Mustang be? I almost feel like they should have gone more retro and maybe throw in some nice quality analog gauges here. Not abandoned technology, but put in some more nuanced technology, like a less intrusive touchscreen. You know, one that's not reaching out and slapping you in the face. <laughs> Put in more high quality, but more retro components. That's all I'm saying. Use higher quality leather. No vinyl in the back seats. I guess more knobs. Sturdy metal, high quality knobs for AC controls. Maybe add some metal knobs, but make them touch sensitive for a retro and high technology mashup. Don't lessen the toggle switches, but enhance them. Like adding up and down toggle functionality. I hate having to cycle through a bunch of modes if I initially toggle too far. To be fair, I would probably like this more if I didn't have a 2018 Mustang GT and then my GT350, which feels so familiar here. More than familiar. They feel the same. With those iPads taped on. While the interior is nice, I feel they didn't go far enough with all the improvements. I feel they just didn't go all in. Although these are the coolest animations right here ever. Look at the transition from sport to track. Very cool. What? I love me some nice polished tech like this. Right front and center. And speaking of front, let's talk about the front end. Well, I feel this is more aggressive than the S550, and it definitely looks gorgeous at certain angles such as this. I can't help but think that the car is smiling at me here. Thanks to my buddy Mike from Mike Fixed It for putting that image in my head. His channel's linked below. Check him out by the way. It looks like a smile, but that's a naughty smile. You're a naughty Mustang, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm kind of okay with it. And anyway, the smile is eliminated in the dark horse, which looks properly peeved. Although I'm getting an RTR aftermarket grill vibe here. Nothing wrong with that though. I love RTR. And I think the hood vents there are the cherry on top to win me over on the S650's front end. I don't like this little rectangle right here. It's present on all the models. One of the radar cars family suggested it might be an adaptive radar. I guess time will tell. I do think this is mostly an improvement over the S550 as it's more muscly, but the headlights on the S550 are sleeker, but they did a good job of blacking out the headlights right here. I'd probably do the same. Although I must admit, the lights are a lot better than I thought they would be, and they're growing on me. But you know this is a gripe video. I got a gripe. Let's turn to the side. It almost looks exactly the same as the S550. Where are your balls, Ford design manager? I can hardly tell the difference from the side. Now the S550 is a sexy wildebeest, so that's not a bad thing. But we wanted something more evolved. Some of the renderings were top notch. Not sure why you opted just to control C and control V the S550. And for those of you who aren't nerds, that means copy and paste. Anyway, I know why you did it because you've got visions of EVs dancing in your heads. Wake up. Your customers don't want any of that crap. 
but at least the side is slightly more aggressive, minus that back end. The back end. Behold the Mustang's rousy little bottom. It's a bottom that's received a proper spanking to make it rousy. And therein lies the problem, Rated Our Cars family. The new Mustang's got a bony little butt. It's too small. It's not aggressive enough. It's like the Mustang's been spending a lot of time in the gym doing bench presses, but like yours truly, forgot to do the squats. No! Glutes, Ford. Glutes, as in gluteus maximus. I'm just feeling gluteus minimus here. Anyway, I do like it from this angle. And the Dark Horse does have that big beefy spoiler in the back to balance out that bodaciously bounty bottom. The Dark Horse. My only complaint here is that at likely $60,000 not including markup, can this car outperform my GT350? Unlikely. Does it look better than my GT350? Not even close. Is it epic looking? Yes, but not as epic as my GT350 was, which has that voodoo engine scream for around the same price but with 26 more horsepower. And while I love these Dark Horse logos, Cobra greater than horse. That's math. So basically this is a new Mach 1 but at a GT350 price point with less performance than the GT350. I don't get it and I won't get it. I'd rather have the regular GT and mod it to my liking. Which brings me to my next point, modding. I've been hearing that the 7th generation Mustang has changed to a locked ECU so Ford can pick and choose who gets to mod the car. Now while that inherently makes your car safer from blowing up, I can see prices going up in an oligopoly situation here and I foresee many many of the smaller tuners and shops getting left out in the cold. I poo-poo this decision, Ford. <laughs> I said poo-poo. <laughs> no! Anyway, I poo-poo this decision, Ford, because don't all mods void warranties anyway? Except for cosmetic ones. Speaking of which, rims. I don't like the rims for the same reason. I didn't like my PP1 rims on my 2018 GT. They're too intricate and therefore difficult to wash. You gotta get your fingers in there and just scrape all your skin off trying to get these things clean. I like the rims on the EcoBoost here, though. Better looking and far easier to clean. The Dark Horse also has nice, less complex rims, looking like the PP2 rims of yesteryear. I'd be upgrading the rims for the channel content anyway, though, so it's a small gripe. And now let's talk about small things. That's what she said. Anyway, novelty. Revving your engine from a distance with your key fob is neat, but what's the practical application of that? Seems like maybe more of a hooligans game. I can't think of a single use for it. Wait, yes I can. I can see me setting up cameras and making a funny video scaring people with a car that revs up with no driver. Okay, I like it. Nice feature, Ford. I like the innovation. A couple more quotes here from Ford's Twitter account just to give a voice to the community. I've been wondering for the last few years where they'd go with the design since the current one is basically perfect. I guess the only way was down. Maybe they're trying to make the Mach-E even more appealing, another person adds. Very boring entire design. Don't know why they keep pushing out the same thing over and over. In fact, it's started to look like a two-door charger at this point. Very underwhelming. Okay, so in summary, and this is your humble host talking now, I'm a simple man, but I do like the S650, and I'm relieved that Ford played it safe and didn't botch it. But frankly, I'd rather be excited about a new car than relieved. My overall feeling is this is a nice car, a marginal improvement over the S550, but it does feel like I'm getting right back into my 2018 MT82 and all. I feel like I could have modded my way to the S650 with some bolt-ons and a few cosmetic mods such as these here. Anyway, God willing, we'll get the new Mustang for the channel, push it to the max and do crazy things with it that no one else is going to do. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe and join the family. Please hit that like and always remember the motto, always be kinder than necessary and I will see you in the next one.